What's um, going on? Uh, Welcome to the board of the TV Center. Let's take March 20th, 2016. Roll call, please. Chairman Paternoster? Here. Vice Chair Anafrio? Here. Secretary O'Rourke? Here. Ed Cordino? Here. Philip Dalmeyer? Here. David McMahon? Here. Deborah Pernier? Here. Okay, salute to the flag.
Jim had an understanding of at the town. I know who took a big hit about that paragraph. I was the one that initially brought it up. I just want to note it that I, I was the one that initiated the conversation sure. about the safety concerns in the auditorium. I know, I know he had a hard time about that. So, um, other than that, I think it's great. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Chairman Paternoster? Yes. Vice Chair Nafrio? Yes. Secretary O'Rourke? Yes. Ed Cordino? Stay. Philip Dalmeyer? Yes. David McMahon? Yes. Deborah Premier? Yes. Okay, February 20th, 2014, special meeting. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the February 20th, 2014 Board of Education Special Meeting as submitted. I'll second that. Any discussion, please? Yeah, me again. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been bored. <laughs> On page 509, the paragraph um, I right under the motion, I had voted no to this, and I uh, clearly stand by my vote, but I had discussion prior to the vote that I didn't think that this figure was high enough. In fact, it just be noted. <coughs> mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Thank you. <coughs> Roll call, please. Chairman Paternoster? Yes. Vice Chair Nafrio? Yes. Secretary of Work? Yes. Ed Cordino? Yes. Philip Dalmeyer? Yes. David McMahon? Yes. Deborah Cunia? Yes. Personnel. Resignation. <laughs> Appointments. The superintendent has received recommendation from the administration for the following spring coaching positions at North Bramford Intermediate School. Boys baseball coach Bruno Castaldi. Girls softball coach Pete Ramada. I'll make a motion to approve the above two coaching positions as recommended by the Intermediate School Administration. I'll second it. Roll call, well, sorry, discussion. Yes, I have a quick question. Um, are we now approving positions before the season for only new coaches or all? Isn't there a question in the fall about that? Right. These, these are uh, for NDIS for softball and baseball for this spring, a current season. But I don't think we approved even the winter sports or the, sp or the whole list of spring. Yes, we did. We had yeah, uh, Rhonda and we had Joey Lasco and Johnny Lasco all, right. all messed up. So we did do mid the intermediate okay. school. Okay, so and then we had Joey for the. We had right. that little confusion. Oh, right, yeah. right, you're right. So we're just right. doing them for NBIS? Uh, this is all I've received right now. Okay. For okay. spring. So will we see, say, Billy Mitch for baseball and when, when you when you got your all set, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. Okay. I didn't think we were just. I didn't think we were really doing it. Hasn't there been some changes? To that about um, their their entitlement to due process if they there's been some state changes or something. So does it is it assumed or is it protocol that they remain the coaches unless something comes up so that we won't have to approve it every year? Or we, st uh, we still typically we still do an thing? annual appointment. Um, okay. the, the 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 three year rule is basically if after a coach has done three years if you do not intend to bring them back then you have to notify them within 90 days of the end of their season that you're not going to offer them a coaching position for the following year and then they have some like due process rights due process. yes okay. which i don't really recall exactly what mm -hmm. they are um, but that's the way that works so it doesn't necessarily mean i mean somebody could be coached for four years and then decide they don't want to do it anymore, so you still need to coach. Right, right, okay. Any further discussion? Any Roll call, please. Chairman Paternoster? Yes. Vice Chair Nafrio? Yes. Secretary O'Rourke? Yes. Ed Cordino? Yes. Philip Dalmeyer? Yes. David McMahon? Yes. Deborah Premier? Yes. I do want to mention that uh, Bruno Castelli was one of the three. Uh, shining star recipients uh, this past week, so it, it was nice very to have nice. him as a coach and also a very good member. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Okay, uh, attached the board of ed briefs 
are there. Uh, I'm not going to go through them, but uh, as you can see, as I always say, the buildings are alive and busy. Um, they're coming off many exciting fundraising events. Uh, the Joe Rope and the Harlem we reported on last week. I think the district raised over $27,000 between um, Jerome and Tawtucket. Um, we had a very successful week across America. The convention convention is tomorrow at TBS. It's a week from tomorrow. We had to postpone it because of the field trip. It's postponed for a week because of the field trip. <laughs> I was going to show up tomorrow at 9. So <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I'm still <laughs> But um, uh, the, the high school is uh, obviously very busy with assessing the camp tomorrow. They had an alternative uh, schedule today. They ran it in a non traditional eight period day. Uh, and some of the students were commenting how they felt lost because they were so used to having each block during this period and then having 42 minute classes when they're usually 84. Um, so they're doing a great job accommodating some of the stressors of getting the cap testing in and, and moving forward with Common Core. So if there's any questions, the administrative team, if you see them, feel free to ask them. Okay. Uh, we have no field trips at this time uh, for approval. <coughs> Non goals under state statute for non tenured certified staff um, must be the deadline of, of uh, the end of April. So, all that information comes forward and how that status stands. Um, moving along, our budget request, as you are well aware, uh, we presented uh, to the town council and at our Saturday workshop involving capital requests on April 1st. We have our First public hearing and budget workshop at 7 o'clock at the NBIS cafeteria. Um, we're hoping to have a large turnout that evening. Uh, as we've stated many times, how critical this budget is moving forward with um, some of the challenges that we are facing with implementing Common Core and transitioning in, and um, how important it is to maintain our teaching staff uh, to, to provide an education that's optimal for teaching and learning for our young. So that's an encouragement for, for all to come out on April 1st to, uh, to share your thoughts about the school system and, mm -hmm. uh, and hear more about what's in this budget. Are we able to do a Connect Ed call just to let people know? We, we are. We, we will put something out and we'll have a handout that evening uh, for uh, the community members so that they, right. those who weren't present at uh, our PowerPoint uh, or do not watch this on TV, that's a part of the watch us on TV. We will have uh, the ability to hand that PowerPoint. PowerPoint because out. I think and, it, and it obviously put it over the right. Because I think in the hand. past there was confusion and people didn't realize that that was their only night to speak. Right. Once they, unless they change, unless the town council has changed it, when they do their budget deliberations, they don't take public no, comment. Right. Well, first is the night. And people. Come out. People, I think, didn't realize that in the past. So just so that we're letting them know that that's their only opportunity to speak. Right. April 1st is the one time for the community members to come out and, and share their concerns. 7 o'clock in the US. Okay, and there's four dates there. Uh, April 2nd, 8th, and then the 9th budget deliberations. And then, uh, obviously those are if needed. As far as the connect, I want to double check one thing because they did change the rules on the use of that. I think it's only for voting, um, but the, the theory was that if you send the connect ed through the school system, then only parents get notified of whatever the event is, right. Right. and you exclude the rest of the community. So they actually made it illegal to use the connect ed for education only in some circumstances. They may also do the reverse 911 from the town, mm -hmm. which you know they're free to do because that covers everything. So can we just um, scribe an email or something to Mike Paulus requesting that? Mm -hmm. The reverse 911? Because we don't have the ability to make that, that it goes out town wide? Sure. And I'm sure the person is sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Not Tuesday. <laughs> you know, maybe once or twice before the meeting. Just so we have it in writing that we requested it. Yep. Any questions regarding the budget uh, meeting dates, locations? No. First ones at NBIS, April first, seven p.m. 
those after the town hall. Uh, Ms. Gassa Student Award Luncheon, I was honored and privileged to be present on March 14th. Uh, Dr. Wells uh, was also present, Dr. Lindsay and Mr. Davis, which recognized six of our outstanding students. I've listed them um, here tonight. Sophia Anastasio, Ethan Sabetta, Kaylee Melillo, Christopher Candelora, Christina Ganji, and Kevin Sullivan were our six students. And we had a, a wonderful day. There were over 300 um, at this event uh, from 18 different towns. And uh, it was an honor to be there. And I know how proud the administrators were to, uh, to bring with these outstanding students. So congratulations to all of them. The Drama Club uh, production will present Oliver. And there's a brief write-up many of you I'm sure are familiar with. I'm not going to read that to you, but uh, the students put an incredible amount of time, energy, and effort into their productions. So if you are available on April 4th at 7 o'clock, or Saturday, April 5th at 1 for a matinee, and then 7 uh, in the evening, in our auditorium tickets are available uh, prior to the show. The prices are listed there, and um, it really is a, a some of us like to see with all of the work being done behind the scenes by our tech crew. Uh, the middle school was involved with the production and assisting. The music department is involved. So it really is a school community event, and the kids put in hundreds and hundreds of hours in preparation for this. And we literally have hundreds of kids involved when you look at uh, everything that goes into it. So mark your calendars, and uh, if you need tickets, you can come to the high school or, or call central office and make sure you have tickets. Okay. Um, it's nice to talk about summer camp after the winter that we had. Uh, it's themed this year as Survivor Camp. Uh, we are going to be running um, the camp again at Tatucket Valley Elementary School. And uh, everything will be done online as we've done over the, uh, the last two years. Students, uh, parents, excuse me, register online, pay online. Uh, the program will be going up. Due to the fact that we started uh, the camp later with our uh, now last day of school, Third, um, it will run an extra week uh, in the summer. So we'll still run full uh, eight, weeks, eight weeks of camp. And the kids will have that experience. So it'll start the week of the 4th of The 30th, the week following, yeah, the first full week following. So any questions on uh, any of the reports? That's all I have to see. Wow. Good job. Committee reports? Negotiations, we're going to go to executive session and for that. Budget and operations. Budget, not much has changed. We just have some committee meetings and not much has changed. Yes, yeah, uh, everything, is, everything is in good shape. Um, and our, um, it appears as though the um, special ed excess cost grants are going to cover the projected shortfall that we had earlier in the uh, special ed outside tuition account. Curriculum instruction and strategic planning. And, well, we had a wonderful little curriculum meeting beforehand, and we, we got a, a synopsis from the parent meeting about the core curriculum. Um, um, talked about a new tentative schedule, a few schedule changes at one of the schools. Um, but going back to the parent night, I, I know it wasn't heavily attended, but there is a lot of talk about the people that, that did attend it and how informative it was, and that they really answered a lot of their questions, and I think that they were missing not misinformed by the school district, but misinformed through the chains of, of of some of these information and it clarified it a lot. Yeah, I, I agree with, with those comments. Obviously, uh, this has drawn a great deal of attention on a national level, and many states are reacting differently. And, and uh, the educational world as a whole has adjusted to this, and we're trying to, uh, as the governor, I think, described drinking water out of a fire hose, and, and he's backed off and, and uh, pushed some of the timelines out. Uh, which, you know, we've been frantically uh, working diligently to stay with and be ready to roll this out. Uh, and we're continuing to do that. The, the, the change in the 
Um, SBAC testing dates did not affect us. Uh, we were not scheduled to test during that first week in March. So we're moving along. Uh, our plan is in place. Our uh, administrators are uh, evaluating teachers based on the core, and our core is fully being implemented, and the benchmark results are coming in. And we're able to tweak and move and adjust, and, and we'll continue to do that uh, right through. So. Thank you, Mrs. Wood, for Thank your you. presentation on that. Thank you. It will be available on channel 19 at some point um, in the near future. And thank you to TJ McMahon for videotaping that and helping us facilitate it. Great. Good. Okay, move on to pension. No meeting. Ready. Move on to policy. Uh, we didn't meet in March, but we do have one policy to go forward with uh, for second reading and approval. And with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve policy P4070, school visitors as submitted. I'll second. I'll second. Got a tie? I think it was the tie. I can't. I'm going to go with okay. go. <laughs> 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 I'm going with it. Uh, any discussion, please? Um, has anything changed, or is this just... It, it was the ability for the different schools to have flexibility in okay. how they were checking. The old policy actually required you to check in at the principal's office, right. which now with the security desks is no longer really true. And so we also added the, um, that the protocol is developed by school administration to so recognize the fact that it might be different for different for school schools. schools. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the high school is, is obviously different than Jerome because if you don't have a reader yet. Well. So yeah. with the policy that's in here says all school visitors shall register in the principal's office. Okay, that's the old one. Okay. That's the one that's, that's no longer. <laughs> well, I was just wondering, I'm like, okay, is that gonna be a new problem? No, I mean I can go grab a copy of the new one if you No, no, that's fine. Well, I just until the next month we'll put the right one in. Well, we always, the old one is in. Um, the new one's not in there. I didn't see it. And the, uh, I assume it was in the first read last time. Right. Yeah, it because we, we spoke specifically to the, the differences between right. the buildings and the, the rationale for having. IDs collected and checked versus at the high school. On the first read? Yeah, Busy, busy time. 
um, and there was um, some legislation, le legislation, legislation. Oh my goodness, um, regarding Common Core and um, uh, regionalizing school calendars. Have you been discussing another time? We've had quite a few communications between the regionalized calendar. And it's been a tall task to yeah. try to get you know, the numbers of districts mm -hmm. that we can work with to come up with common PE days and vacation dates and you know, how we work with mm -hmm. days in February versus towns who do not do that and the last day of school and what it would look like. So. Right, so we reviewed the um, legislation that they're presenting. Mm -hmm. Um, and it called for five floating days, a, a, a specific start date, certain days for um, the Christmas holiday, for winter break, and um, April. Right. And then Monday and Tuesday for February vacation. Right. But there, there is some flexibility, but we'll see what happens. Right. And the next year it's not going to be implemented, it's to follow. <coughs> right, so the way it reads now is next year is mandatory, so that's one of their recommendations is that uh, I'm sorry, for 15 16, right. it was supposed to be mandatory, but they're trying to make that another year. Right. Okay. Building committee. I didn't make the meeting. I didn't make the March meeting. Okay. But I do know that the, uh, the high school roof specs have been completed and it's out on the street for, and they're expecting it back, I believe, the first week in April. There's actually I was a walkthrough today. Mm -hmm. but there was a walkthrough today, and was there? according to Bill Chody, it was rather well attended. Oh, okay. good. Good. Did they, they, they carry on girls? Did it rain today? Or last night? Probably did. They were all over. Communications. You want to take a call? I wasn't there, was it? That's what you're doing. You're putting you on the spot. You want to take it? I was there. That's right. Take the one person that was there. things that, that we need to bring up. Um, one, the town council has requested us to pay for two lights outside of the parking lot with the community center. And um, there was indications made at the communication meeting that we weren't going to do that, but I said we would bring it to the board and discuss it with the board and you know everybody could weigh in on it. Um, there's grant money coming for the community center and they wanted to do 10 10 lights and they decided that we should pay for two of them and we've been here all this time and the lights that we have are satisfactory. We I actually I we've, personally, we've, uh, placed five exterior lights on the building and uh, the main entrance way uh, which we access we have two large lights in the corner of the gymnasium and then for FRC we have two building lights there so our needs are being met uh, for what our building usage is uh, at this time. And at this point in time, they have, in my opinion is they haven't been budgeted for in our budget. We have extra added costs now because we are, are dealing with an arbitration. We don't know exactly what that's going to happen. We don't know what we're going to have. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys want to put it to a vote, if you just want to talk about it, but... Well, I'd like to ask, is this a decision that needs to be made before the budget season's over, or, or can we make this decision I think they're, I don't know. I, I don't think that it's dependent on, on the budget, right? So either we agree that yeah, we're responsible for two lights or not, regardless of what happens with the budget. The, the building committee, I think, right. has made themselves pretty clear on that a number of meetings. They said the board of it is not going to pay for any additional lights. Oh, they did? Yeah, we made it pretty clear. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's how you guys feel, but I feel the same way. Yeah, I agree. I agree as well. So, so how do you think? So, yeah. Well, I think we use lights once a month, that's for the Board of Ed meeting, really. When else is the Board of Ed using the lights? Yeah. In the morning. We're not really in this building. We're not. And one night a month, we're here. That's it. These people could watch where they walk. It's fun. <laughs> well, again, you should stay away from that subject. It's not a good issue. We're now. Um, why should we pay for... Yeah, but arbitrarily, why two? Well, and that's right. So if there was like a reason for no, two, or two one percentage of the lighting that they wanted us to do. Well, the other thing is, I don't know if 10 is an overkill. 
out there really to be honest with you. I, I, I think, think the architect yeah. had recommended more than that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's overkill. Well, I think the original one was like 14 or something like that. Right. I'm sure the design so. engineer came in and, and yeah, did a schematic of the lot and, and the lighting that would be needed. Yeah. And it was, it was like 14 or 15 originally. Right. 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 I think we're all in agreement that it's not. Yeah. Well, I said at the communication yeah. meeting, I, you know, it was a lengthy discussion, and I said, well, the bottom line is we bring it to the board and we right. let the board decide. You know, like, those lights are pretty keep... expensive, too, I believe. Mean. Well, they're $5,000 a piece. They want $10,000. Oh, I thought they were $2,500. No, they want $5,000 a piece. So, uh, anything, else anything else for communications? Yeah, yes. Um, another thing that I was asked to make sure that was discussed at this meeting was um, a suggestion was made in the communication committee meeting that I don't want to use the wrong terms, but there being like a, a lease between the town and the Board of Education defining who's responsible for what in the buildings. And there was discussion about it at the town council meeting. And basically by state statute, that's illegal anyway, so it's a new issue. But I was asked to make sure it was brought up under communication during the meeting, so I did. It's illegal, we can't do it, so we move on. Anything else? Nope. Okay. We move along to new business. Uh, we have a personal matter related to a current profession that we go to and make a new session for. Good report. I'd like to move to adjourn to executive session. No, no, no. Go to the board. Go to the board. I have something. Go to the board. We're going to go to the board first. It's going to be good to the board. Oh, okay. First, okay. Then, all right. <laughs> good to the board. It's always you. Do you have anything that I don't want to talk to you for you? Do you like the Mr. Potter? Yeah, I, you know. No, I just want to say that, shut up. I want to say that I think townspeople are really doing really well. They're realizing that this board is really trying to do our best and, and they're rallying around us and standing up for us and speaking their mind. And I just want to go uh, tag on to Mr. Schoolmaker what he said earlier about April 1st. That is your time to come out and speak. You know, right, wrong, or indifferent, as a taxpayer, April 1st is your time to express your opinion on this. Keep the scuttlebutt out of the mobile and all that. Go in first and let us know how you stand. Let the town council know how you stand. And let your voice be heard. Um, if you don't go April 1st and let your voice be heard, right, wrong, or indifferent, hold your peace. Um, but I encourage everyone to come out April 1st. Uh, support our budget. And you know we're out trying to do the best for the, uh, the town. And um, that's it for me. It was easy. Go ahead, go. I just wanted to say thank you to this group of people because um, it was like this time last year that I decided <laughs> I want to try and sit up here um, and learn a great deal. And I think we've done a great job being collaborative, um, all of us. And we don't always agree, but we're always professional about it. So I just wanted to thank everybody. Oh, Major, you're nice. welcome. Mm -hmm. We did. We're glad you're here. Mr. Phil, yes, I'd like to thank Tracy. She gave us a, a discussion tonight before the meeting, early, and uh, about the, the concept of the block scheduling. And I never did understand the block scheduling, but I do now, and I want to thank her very much. It was very good. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other good for the board? Visitors and press. We have no visitors, we have no press. I'd like to recognize Bruce Williams who's here this evening. I go right ahead. Uh, that's our tech director. I know that you approved him, and uh, I've been joining, but I don't know if I'm officially embarrassed him. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. I want to take this opportunity to introduce and embarrass Bruce this night, and I appreciate him being here, and he was obviously uh, at the council meeting uh, the other night as well, and I want to thank him for his support. Well, thank you, and good luck. Good luck to thank you. you. Thank you. Next regular uh, board event schedule meeting is scheduled for Thursday, April 10th, 2014. Go ahead, Phil. Go ahead, Phil. Take it away. Okay. Now I'd like to move to adjourn to the executive session as per section 1225 of the Connecticut General Statutes. As permitted by Section 1206A of the Connecticut General Statutes, we discuss Agenda Item 8, 
Non-renewals, item nine, committee reports, negotiations related to MBFT arbitration, and item 10, new business personnel matter. I'll second that. Who, who, Dave, that's fine. All in favor? Aye. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.